Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And I was reflecting today about mental health, and and I was remembering one of the books that I found incredibly comforting when I was struggling with my own mental health was by a Zen teacher named Sherry Huber, and the book was called There's Nothing Wrong With You. Now, I remember very little of the content of that book, but I remember being both inspired and challenged by the title because I knew there was a lot wrong with me. I could show you doctors who agreed that there was a lot wrong with me. I could show you medical records to prove that there was a lot wrong with me. And yet, there was something about that title. There's nothing wrong with you that rang true. I actually do remember one line from the book um, because I've quoted it many times. And she said, that voice inside your head is not the voice of God. It just sounds like it thinks it is. Now, I hadn't thought about that book for a long time when I went to see a man who's now become a colleague and a friend, Dr. Bill Pettit, speak to a group of doctors about working with post-traumatic stress disorder, and in particular, working with soldiers. And I went because I wanted to learn his approach, which is based on the principles of mind, consciousness and thought, the inside-out understanding that I talk about in these podcasts each week. But at the time, I was very new to it, and, and I thought there must be some secret technique and so I had my notebook, and I was sitting in the back of the room, and I, I kind of had to cadge my way in there because I, I, I wasn't a doctor, and it was a seminar for doctors. And unusually for me, within a few minutes, I put down my notebook because I just got this doctor who was a mental health practitioner. He was a board-certified psychiatrist. He was the head doctor at a mental hospital for over 20 years, lectured at universities. He was so sure that there was nothing wrong with people that you'd go nuts trying to convince him that you were nuts. And I saw that you couldn't fake it, but I didn't get it because I knew there were all sorts of things wrong with me. And Bill, in fact, would talk about nothing broken, never lacking. And that threw me because it was like, no, 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 I'm broken. I, 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 I can show you the ways I'm broken. Now, I might be fixable. We might be able to put Humpty Dumpty back together again, but don't tell me I'm not broken, right? I'd even celebrate my brokenness. Well, I've had to overcome this and I've had to overcome that. Don't tell me that was just a misunderstanding. But it wouldn't let me go, or I couldn't let it go. This idea that I might not be broken. This idea that there was nothing wrong with me or anybody else. Because I would see, I'd feel my own struggles. I'd see people struggling. I'd see people behaving in ways that just seemed to indicate there was something very wrong with them. And then one day, it just became obvious to me that it was true. And I suddenly saw that it, it's not that people are broken. It's that they don't know how they're made. It's not that somebody's mind is cracked. It's that they don't understand how the mind works, and so they innocently misuse it. And one of the analogies that came to me was if somebody didn't understand about hot and cold water taps, and they only knew about the cold tap, and so they 
they, 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 but you know, the water was too cold to to to, to use, and they, they they wanted warmth, so they'd they'd sort of light a fire, so they could put their hands over like a warm uh, fire, and then quickly wash them under the tap, and then put them back over the warm fire, or they'd boil the water so that they could then put their have warm water to wash their hands in. Well, it's not that there was really a lack of hot water. They didn't realize it was a separate tap. Or another one, actually, this one came up in a class earlier today, where I said, look, if a plumber comes to your house because you're complaining there's no hot water and notices that the taps are reversed and it's just the side that's usually hot is cold and the side that's usually cold is hot, they could give you a big song and dance about fixing your boiler but really, they, they just need to point out to you what does what. And you can figure it out from there. I had one of the most embarrassing versions of that when I was uh, leading a, a retreat in Majorca. And we'd gotten to the hotel. It was a beautiful hotel, a little before sunset. And I really had heard the sunsets were beautiful there. And, and I had gotten a room with a balcony so I could sit out. And, and the door was broken. I couldn't get it to open. And I, you know, played with a lock and I pulled and I pushed and I, you know, tried all that. And I've, you know, sunsets getting closer. <laughs> Damn it, I want my sunset. So I'm phoning down to the lobby, very zen, and, and, and going, hey, you know, my, the, the door to my thing is broken. Well, have you tried unlocking it, sir? Yes, of course I've tried unlocking it. What do you do? And so they sent somebody up. And he walks over to the door, and he slides it open. It had just never occurred to me, because it had a knob on it, that it might be a sliding door. The reason that it looks like we're broken, that it looks like there's something wrong with us, is just because we haven't figured out <laughs> how it works yet. We haven't seen how perfectly we're made. But when we do, it becomes obvious that not only is there nothing broken, not only is there nothing wrong with us, there never has been. Now, it would be nice, I've thought from time to time, and maybe you're thinking now, if there was a user's manual. And while to a certain extent, I like to think of my books and these podcasts as user's manuals for human beings. There is a sort of a built-in user's manual. We have an innate wisdom. We have an innate capacity to understand how well we're made and how perfectly we work. And so while if these podcasts, if my writing, if other people's writing has been useful to you as a user's manual, please have at it. Ultimately, you can kind of go within and you'll get real-time instruction. And that's what I think throws us, is it's real-time instruction. It's not like we can access the manual and, and go, well, if I'm ever in this situation, what do I do? If I ever feel this, what does it mean? It's real time. So it's sort of like if you ever hover over something on a computer screen and a, a sort of an explanation pops up of what it does. It's like that with our mind when we're actually in the situation. There's something in us that will show us what's going on and will see how perfectly we work in real time, whether or not we could actually write it down in a manual and show it to someone else. Have fun, learn heaps, happy exploring, and I'll talk with you soon.